did you find the situation with uh, bike traffic in Hanover the last few days? And in your opinion, what should be done and what should be changed first? And what can the authorities and politicians do, and also each of us, to help improve the situation? And it's your turn now. This is what you do. It looks weird, but I will explain. Um, I get asked this question all the time uh, when I go and work with cities. Where do we go from here? And if I'm in a city like I was recently, St. Petersburg in Russia, you just think, oh God, you know, come and sit on my lap and I'll, because you know, oh. they're in a completely different place. So my first impression yesterday when we were cycling around was uh, this is a weird city. And that's not a bad thing, it's just weird because you have 19% on bicycles. Uh, there are thousands of cities around the world fighting to get just to 5% and you have 19, you have this amazing luxury position in the world, like of all the cities in the world, over 100,000 people. So, and then now, then you need a bike conference to try and figure out how to m go from 19 to 25 or 30. That's, I just find that weird. It's a really unique situation, so it's interesting. Um, <laughs> My other impression was riding around Hanover um, is uh, it, it's like playing a video game, right? You know, you, you, there's different levels and you turn the corner and there's <laughs> little hurdles and you have to jump over things and, you know. I like video games. I grew up in the 80s, so I really like video games, but I don't want to be forced to play somebody else's game just going from A to B in a city. I like to choose when to play a game. I don't want to have to play the game every single day and risk, you know, <laughs> you know, falling off a bike, right? Um, so that's interesting. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, <laughs> democracy. Um, I think, you know, you're Germans, you know, you're, you're, you're citizens of Germany. I think you really need to show seriously, you know, that, that you take democracy seriously, which you do. But, you know, you need to take urban democracy seriously. Um, you know, I, it was in the newspaper uh, today that I said, I know how to say the right things, but, you know, it's a dictatorship for, for automobiles, and it is. You know, you have 19% on bicycles, you have, I can't remember, but a lot of people, you know, pedestrians, and this is a large portion of the population who are not respected in the traffic. You know, they are second-class citizens, and, and things need to change. Most of the cars you see driving through Hanover on a Monday to Friday, these are people who don't even live here. They live in another city, and they're just using the streets here. So, I mean, it's like I leave my front and back door open, and I just let people sort of walk through with muddy shoes to get, you know, to get somewhere. Hi, see you later. Okay. Do you want some food? No? Okay. <laughs> It's um, Italian traffic planners. I was in, working in a city in Italy, and uh, we're looking at a map of the city, and this guy, Italian guy, he kept talking about parasites. And there's a lot of parasites on this street, and he meant the motorists. And I thought, is this an inside joke for us <laughs> who, who plan for bicycles? He says, no, very typical in Italy. It's parasites. These are people who drive down, drive from A to B through a city, and they don't contribute anything They're to the host organism. They just go, they use the road to get from A to B. They don't stop at the hairdresser, that local supermarket, or that shop in the city center. They do that when they get to wherever they're, you know, wherever they're from. They go to their local supermarket. So if you live in a city, in a home, you know, that these are a lot of people who you didn't invite. You know, yes, they have to work here. The economy has to work, of course. But they should be given other options for transporting themselves in your home. So this urban democracy is, is, is very important. There needs to be more of a balance. Uh, this has been the goal in Copenhagen for many years. The Dutch in, in cities like Amsterdam really prioritized the bicycle. In Denmark, it was more of a compromise. We, it was a 30-30-30%. A, a you know, um, and we have achieved that. And now the car is starting to, to decline because the bicycle has taken over and public transport. But you need to find, first of all, the 33-33-33 the mix cars, you know, public transport and, and, and bicycles. Um, data. This is incredibly important. This is a city exactly the same size as Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, you know, well, sort of, you guys have 19% on bicycles, but nobody really knows if you do. <laughs> I don't know how you measure that. And you measured in 2003, and then somebody said, "Let's do it again in 2013." And and it, so it's not. A, it's, I don't know if it's a credible number. In Copenhagen, we have 40 places under the asphalt all over the city every day, counting how many cyclists there are. There are cameras counting cars. Um, there are 200 spots around the city counting cyclists. So any street in Copenhagen, I can tell you, um, and you can test me after, I mean, I can tell you almost how many cyclists are on that street every day. If you want to move to the next level, you know, you need a bike conference, but you need to have data. 
If you have the right wing who has also have to vote, or, or maybe even the social democrats who are a little bit skeptical, you have to say, this is the numbers. You know, you're German, we're Danish, we should understand this. It's numbers, you know, <laughs> it's measuring things. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and you don't, and then you should. That's the next step for the city, is measuring, getting out there and counting, knowing exactly how many people are on bicycles on foot in the city. That information is power. That brings change, is being able to sell the idea with numbers. So do that. Um, <laughs> Leadership, the whole world wants to do this. Everybody's fighting to get 5%, you know, um, you know and, and, and you have 19. You know, if I, I'm waiting for the city. We, I talked about in the talk yesterday how Seville uh, went to 7% in only a couple of years and Paris is now at 8% after only you know, six or seven years. Um, the city, like you, with 19%, you know, if you went to 30%, if you did all the things that, you know, in a hopefully you know you need to do, if you did that and you went to 30%, which I said is possible, I think, in 10 years, the world will just, like, come and, and ask you how you did that. It's city branding. People will want to know how you did it. You will be famous in Germany. You'll be famous around the world. They'll, like, stop in Hanover to get to Copenhagen, you know, or to Amsterdam. You know, it'll be, like, seriously, you know. Because when I arrived on the airplane, I, uh, the, sign, the first sign as I'm coming up the walkway was like, you know, welcome to the, the trade fair capital. And I'm going, okay, that's not very sexy. <laughs> you know, I'd rather come to the bicycle capital of Germany, you know, the city that just rocked it in 10 years, proving everything we know and they did it. That, well, seriously, the, the, if you build that, people will come. They will be coming from all over the planet to want to know how you did it. Um, cargo bikes, more cargo bikes. You have 19%. You have cities like Strasbourg with 13, 15%. Cargo bikes are everywhere. I know it's growing here, but this is the perfect city for cargo bikes. Whereas the, in France, in French cities, they're subsidizing cargo bikes for, uh, for families and small businesses. You could just, and the visual effect of more cargo bikes on the streets really accelerates the bicycle, the, the growth of bicycle, bicycle culture. It also just makes really logistical sense with cargo bikes in a city. So subsidies from the region or the city for families um, and, and, you know, or, or small businesses, get more cargo bikes out there and you'll see how things change. House, you've built with your, you know, regarding bicycles and, and in your city you have built a fine house. You have a foundation, you have solid walls, good German building, you know, it's, it's not gonna fall over. There's a roof, but there's holes in it. You need windows, you gotta, you know, you gotta put some windows in, some doors, you have to plant some trees in the front yard, you know, you have to uh, put in some nice furniture, you have to take that house and make it a home. And, you know, that's really the goal, uh, riding a bicycle, walking in the city, everything about making this a more livable city. It's a house right now, and it could be a home, and it's up to you to do that. Thank you.